Welcome back. You're with us on Bazaar Morning Call. And uh, while the setup is still looking quite optimistic, and in all probability, we will have a positive start. The question is, what about individual stocks? What's the list to look at? There you go. That's the implied open, just getting better and better. 180 points now. So while the opening is going to be good, what about individual stocks? Well, for that, we have our team standing by with the CNBC TV 18 list of top stocks to watch. Hi, guys. Happy Monday to all of you. Uh, Nigel, let's start first with Tara Steel. Big news coming in on a, on a big plant being commissioned. Well, that's right. And that's what they guided for, right? They said that the Odisha expansion will come on stream by September. And September it is. So they've gone ahead and they've announced on the exchanges that they've commissioned their blast furnace at the Kalinga Nagar Odisha facility. So uh, earlier the facility had a capacity of closure on 3 million tons. Or I believe it's a state of the art. And hopefully we here at CNBC TV 18 We'll visit that plant in the next month or so and try to get you uh, live pictures of that. It's moved from around 3 million tons to around 8 million tons. They've invested close to 25,000 uh, uh, crores odd. So expect the stock to open up in the green. Tara Steel is the one that we're tracking. But let's hop across to Vamakshi. She's tracking the one uh, which bounced a little bit from the lows on Friday's trading session. Vamakshi, tell us about Vodafone Idea. Well, Nigel, Vodafone Idea is expected to open in the green today and that is because the company has concluded a mega $3.6 billion or 30,000 crore INR deal with Nokia, Ericsson as well as Samsung. Now, this deal is for supply of network equipment over the period of the next three years and this deal marks the first step towards the rollout of the company's three-year capex plan of $6.6 billion or 55,000 crores. Now, keep in mind that the stock did see some pressure on the back of that AGR development that did come through but the street was anticipating... Uh, uh, this capex plan and was waiting for it uh, ever since uh, the equity fundraise went through so definitely a positive in fact we also have a analyst meet scheduled at 2 30 pm today so we will be watching out for the commentary that comes from the management but as of now the stock is expected to see some respite in the trading session today Okay, all right, uh, Vamakshi, thank you very much uh, for that. HDFC B Bank is the next one which should be in focus. Ritu is here to tell us why. Ritu, morning. Good morning, Prashant. Uh, positive news for HDFC Bank because its subsidiary, HDB Financial Services, has now approved plans for an IPO that's going to include a fresh equity issue worth about 2,500 crores and an offer for sale by the existing shareholders. It is a milestone IPO because it's going to be the first one from HDFC Group to uh, you know, go public in six years. The listing is also critical for the company to comply with RBI guidelines because as an upper layer NBFC, it needs to go public before September 2025. Now, it's a diversified, non-deposit taking NBFC with the primary focus on vehicle and personal loans as well as loans against property. HDFC Bank, it, they hold about 94.6% stake in HDB Financial and reports suggest that the NBFC could be valued at about 78 to 87,000 crore rupees. So even with a 10% dilution, you're looking at HDFC Bank raising about 7,800 to 8,700 crore rupees. They reported, uh, the HDB had reported about 2390 crores of revenue, 580 crores of profits and a total loan book of 95,600 crores as, as of the end of June. Okay, all right, got it. Ritu, thanks very much. That's a big one to watch out for from HDFC Bank. Well, let's uh, move on. Ekta is joining in. She's looking at a bunch of stocks as well. Ekta, good morning. Morning. Well, let's start with Mankind Pharma, which is in focus because they had that board meet on the 20th of uh, um, 20th of September. They have approved raising up to 10,000 crores via NCDs and commercial papers on a private placement basis. They've also constituted a fundraising committee to take all necessary action, including finalization of terms of issuance, allotment of NCDs, CPS and other related matters. Remember that in Q4, the company had already approved fundraising for up to 7,500 crores via QIP. They had their borrowing limits at that point as well but this is obviously a step towards funding the BSV acquisition. Now, Biocon, uh, USFT inspected their API facility, issued three observations. The company does not foresee any impact on business. Expect the stock to probably see some red on account of it. RT Drugs, USFT issued a Form 43 with seven observations to their API unit in Tarapur. None of the observations are related to data integrity, but nonetheless, you can expect uh, RT Drugs to probably be in the red today. All right, take that. Thanks for that. Well, let's go back to Vamakshi. She's tracking a couple of more stocks, BHEL, and Fusion Finance. Vamakshi? 
Well, absolutely, BHEL expected to open higher today, and that is because the company has received a notification of award uh, more than 6,100 crores from NTPC. Now, this is for an 800 megawatt SIPAT supercritical thermal power project stage 3, so going with the green on BHEL on account of this order win. Fusion Finance is the next one I'm watching out for, going with the red, and that is because the company may be required to make an ECL or estimated credit loss provisioning between 500 to 550 crores in the second quarter as compared to nearly 350 crores as seen in the first quarter. Now, in addition to that, the company is also expected to initiate search for a new MD and CEO, citing increased macro complexity as well as changing sectoral landscape. Uh, the company also plans to raise around 550 crores through equity in order to strengthen its balance sheet. There's also a note that came in from Investec. They've gone ahead and downgraded their rating on this counter to sell and also cut their target price to 300, saying that while the microfinance sector is witnessing a stress, fusion credit costs are way too high. So given this development, going with the red for Fusion Finance. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks a lot for that. Well, uh, let's wind this down then with Upasna, who's tracking two more stocks. That's Dixon and Matrimi.com. Uh, Upasna? Good morning. First up, let me start with Dixon Technologies. India and US to set up a multi-chip fabrication plant and this is the first ever India-US semiconductor fabrication cooperation. This move is likely to give a big boost to the chip manufacturing ecosystem in the country and semiconductors are important components of electronic products. Now, Dixon Technologies remains in focus as the company is a diversified electronics company with operations in various verticals such as consumer electronics, mobile phones, lightings and various others. Now, next up is matrimony.com. The company plans to launch new vertical for grey collar jobs called as many jobs and the company will exclusively focus on grey collar job market specifically on frontline and entry level jobs. The company is planning its initial launch in Tamil Nadu market in September 2024 which is mainly a website for employers and recruiters and it plans October 2024 for the launch of the app for the job seekers. Hence these two stocks remain in focus and I expect both of them to open in green today. All right, got it. Uh, Upasan, thank you very much for that. So let's uh, quickly recap our list of top stocks to watch. The ones that have positive news flow around them are Tata Steel, HDFC Bank, Mankind Pharma, Dixon Tech, Matrimony, Vodafone Idea and BHL. Stocks with negative news flow around them are Biocon, RT Drugs and Fusion of Finance. Okay, so that's the stock list for the morning. Now let's look out for all the commodity cues that we're getting. Manisha Gupta is joining in with the latest. Manisha, good morning. Morning and thank you for that. So we will there is gains continuing in many of the commodities. Gold, for example, is trading at near all time highs. Indian price is also at an all time high above seventy four thousand rupees a ten grams here. Silver in the meanwhile, also because the China is now expected to introduce stimulus, has seen some support. So you have silver at a two-month highs. Copper price is also trading at around two-month highs. Copper also is taking support from the fact that there are energy shortages in Zambia, which is the leading uh, co copper or, or uh, supplier, and there are shortages because of that as well. The strong gains that have, we have seen in crude oil prices just about continue. The last two weeks have been positive, and currently as well, we are trading above $75 a barrel. Support comes in from the weak dollar index, escalating Middle East tensions, and the fact that the U.S. is planning the lightest maintenance in three years has been supportive. So eight out of ten commodities, I would say, are trading in the positive in the Asian markets right now. All right, uh, Manisha, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, so that is uh, oil in focus. We take a quick commercial break here. We'll get to Prakash Divan on the other side. Uh, we talk individual stocks uh, which are likely to move today. That's coming up.